Yeah, sometimes people will object to the design hypothesis saying, well, or a theistic design hypothesis um, more specifically by saying, well, then if you're, uh, if you're positing God as the explanation for the origin of the universe, who created God? And doesn't that therefore render your explanation absurd? Um, and my answer to that is no, that every philosophical system has to posit something as what philosophers sometimes call a primitive, the thing from which everything else came, or in worldview studies, they call it the prime reality, or in, in formal reality. philosophy, they'll talk, talk about the, the issue of ontology. What is the thing from which everything else came? And the materialists have long, the, the eternal self-existent thing from which everything else came, the thing that doesn't need explaining. And materialists have long affirmed that matter and energy are that are those things, and and uh, and I would say in the in the aftermath of the great revolution of thought that's taken place in the last hundred years in cosmology, where we have multiple lines of evidence and developments within theoretical physics, suggesting that the universe itself, the physical universe, had a beginning, that matter and energy are now a poor candidate to be the thing from which everything else came. They themselves appear to have come into existence a finite time ago, before which, whatever that means, uh, there was no matter and energy to do the causing. They can't be the eternal self-existent thing because they began a finite time ago. Uh, they haven't been around forever. And s whereas um, if you posit God, in and a God possessing the attributes that, say, Jews and Christians have long ascribed to God, then you are positing the existence of an entity which has precisely the type of attributes that you would need to explain the origin of the physical universe from nothing physical. It has, God is an entity who, who exists outside of space and time, is immaterial, and is thought to have great power. So if such a being exists, it provides a better explanation. Uh, to, to suppose that such a, a being exists provides a better explanation for the origin of the universe than does materialism. The, the second class of evidence that I address in the book that I think reveals the mind behind the universe that points to intelligent design is the evidence that physicists have discovered in their analysis of the conditions that would be needed the phys of the, in their analysis of the physical property, the basic physical properties of the universe. And they find, found that time and time again, there are very fundamental properties of physics, such as the strength of gravitational attraction or the strength of electromagnetic attraction or the mass of the elementary particles, in particular the quarks, or the, uh, the strength of the force that's causing the universe to expand called the cosmological constant, that each of these different fundamental parameters have to fall within very narrow ranges or tolerances outside of which um, life would be impossible. And the probability of getting even one of these parameters in that just right sweet spot is oftentimes extremely small. Sometimes it's just small, but other times it's almost vanishingly small. So, uh, for example, the cosmological constant is the for the name of the force that physicists give to the force that is causing the expansion of the universe. It turns out that that force is fine-tuned to one part in 10 to the 90th power. Uh, so it's a big, you know, 10 to the 90th big exponential number. It's a tiny, tiny smidgen within a vast range of possibilities. To put that probability of getting that force just right in context, it would be that roughly the same probability as a blindfolded man floating in free space would have of choosing one marked elementary particle among not just all the elementary particles in our universe, but in having, having to explore 10 billion universes our size. It's, it's, it's an incredibly improbable, okay? And yet the universe is sort of balanced on a razor's edge. If, and if, you only need one, yeah. right, of the key forces yeah, but many, that are of these, independent. many of these probabilities, some of the probabilities might be derivative, of, some of the parameters might be deriv derivative of others, and so the probabil probabilities in those cases 
cases would not be independent, but many of the probabilities and the parameters are certainly independent. So the probabilities are multiplicative. But you, you start you know, with just a few parameters that you have insanely small probabilities. And yet, they, the, you're in the sweet spot where life, life can exist. So the Fred Hoyle, who discovered some of the first and most important fine-tuning parameters, had been a staunch scientific atheist. He has a reversal of worldview as a result of his own discovery of the fine-tuning and later is quoted as saying that, the, that the, um, a common sense interpretation of the data suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics to make life possible. And um, it's pretty compelling. A fine-tuning fine suggests a fine-tuner.